Hey folks, welcome to the channel. I'm pretty excited about today's build. We're gonna do stainless sand mai. I've tried this once before with so-so results, but let's see how this turns out now. This time I'm using 416 stainless with a 1080 core. Let's check it out. I'm ready to weld up this stainless sand mai. Um, I've got 416 stainless, so two six inch pieces of that. And uh, this is 1080. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to grind these down just a little bit. I've already cleaned them with acetone, but I'll take them to the grinder on some some 220 or something and just take the scale off these as well. And then TIG weld them. I recently got into TIG welding and I just love it. I love how clean a process it is. I've got this TIG welded all around, um, fused actually, I think you call it, because I didn't use any filler. Um, but uh, fused all around, we should be ready for the forge. The first thing I do is use some light presses to set the weld and then I get a little more aggressive and draw this out. I need to get this down to an eighth inch from a uh, three eighths. So here we are after the forging. Um, it's pretty good thickness. Now I'm gonna get the scale off and um, take the edges down so that I can uh, etch the blade and see where the core is. I forgot to turn the camera on, but um, I surface ground this. I took a bit off the edges um, and I threw it in the etch. And you can see right here, pretty much centered the core uh, there's still weld on either side and again that's not really weld that's fused so there's some um, stainless that has come over this but I don't want to take this down until I get the blade profile on it um, and there was some issue here where it's mostly 1080 here but I think that's just right here because it's centered right there so I think it's just kind of laid over a little bit here. I'll figure that out when I uh, when I actually put the pattern on it. After forging, this blade was really hard. I couldn't even cut it with the bandsaw. I don't show it later on, but I have a really hard time drilling holes in it as well, so I ended up annealing it again. So here it is after the profile. Um, I've etched it. It looks pretty much perfect to me. The 1084 core is right in the center. All right, I'm going to put a distal taper in this. Uh, I'm going to use the surface grinder like I've done in the past. Take the center bolt out raise this a little bit and um, then flip the blade over and do both sides. Let's do it. All 
I seem to be getting overly excited on this build and keep forgetting to turn the camera on. So here's the oven heating up, uh, getting ready for the normalization process. I use stainless steel foil now for the normalization process just to reduce any scaling on the blade. The heat treat on these stainless steel sand my blades is the stressful part. Uh, they tend to have a split down the seam because the steels heat and contract at different rates. Another problem with stainless sand my is warping. That's why I'm putting it between plates for the temper. So pretty much as expected on doing a stainless sand my, I did get a bit of a warp. It's teeny tiny um, and it's mostly on the tang. So I'm going to wrap it, heat it in my straightening jig and see if I can take a bit of it out. Pretty good. I forgot to file the false edge in before I heat treated. So here I am doing it on the grinder, which I hate. Finally finished all the hand sanding on this sand my. Not sure if you guys can see it, but it's got a pretty good shine to it. Uh, it's only down to 1500, um, which is well, plenty because it, it's going to have to go in the etch, um, which is next. Here we go into the etch. Well, folks, I'm not happy. I etched it, and when I pulled it out of the etch, and it was a pretty short etch, um, the edge was black, but I'm already seeing pitting in the stainless, and that drives me crazy. I want the stainless nice and shiny. I guess I have to take this back, re-sand it. Here we are, re-sanded. It's been an hour and a half later. Luckily, I only had to go to, down to 800 to get the pits out. Um, we're gonna retry this after seeking some knowledge from where everyone gets it, the internet. Um, I'm going to do a really quick etch in ferric, probably only about 30 seconds. Uh, I'm gonna wipe off the oxides and then it's gonna go into coffee, um, which I was gonna do anyway, but I guess I was thinking it needed more ferric. So uh, quick ferric wash off the oxides into the coffee, probably 12 hours. So I'm ready to handle material uh, for this blade. Uh, I'm gonna use these um, Box Elder Burls dyed red. I think they look amazing. Uh, they're from More Burls. Uh, I'll put the link down in the description, but uh, they look really cool. Uh, I'm going to use a black G10 liner, so I'm just going to make up some, mix up some epoxy, put it on, slap these on here, um, so I've got them ready.
Okay, I've got both scales contoured a little bit. Uh, time to drill the pin holes. Um, I've got these stacked together. They're clamped, and there's also a backer board under here so I don't get blow through. 3 16 drill bit. We should be ready to drill these holes. You can't really see it here, but I'm using a carpenter square and using the 45 degree angle just to put some bevels on the front of the scales. I also wanted to put a nice contour in the front of the scale, so I'm using a half round file to put that in. It's important to sand the front of your scales down because you won't be able to access this once they're on the knife. So I sand these right down to a thousand. Okay, we're ready for glue up. I've sanded uh, this part here down to a thousand so it's finished. I've acetone the blade to the inside of the scales. These always have your um, whatever you need ready uh, when you're doing epoxy. I always use q-tips So I have those ready to clean up the front here for the pre the the epoxy that leaks out. Okay, let's go Now I'm getting the handle scales flush with the tang. I do this against the rest just to make sure I get it nice and square. I contour the back of the spine by rocking it back and forth on the platen, and then I move to the 10 inch wheel to get that tapered bevel in the base of the handle. Now I move to filing and sanding the handle to get that finished polished look. 